Hello, my name is Anne. My presentation, Social Pedagogy in Poland, a Discipline on the Edge or an Edge of Disciplines, uh, will be a picture postcard of the current social pedagogy landscape in Poland, uh, in Polish academic context, and I will draw some basic concepts of spatial sociology to uh, define the disciplinary edge within social sciences and to look at the boundaries and opportunities posed by being on the edge of the disciplines and on the edge of international thought. Spatial concepts have been present in social sciences since Lefebvre, La Production de l'Espace, uh, 1974, and were advanced by White and Logan. Therefore, positional theory is used as first discussed by Boudon, who acknowledged the role of secondary social positioning in certain educational situations based on primary positioning. The concept of positioning was further defined by Hare as a cluster of short-term disputable rights, obligations and duties that place a person in a certain position in every social situation. Clearly, the positioning theory refers to humans who position themselves in relation to others and others position themselves in relation to them, constantly renegotiating who is positioned where in social situations. Drawing from this idea, the position of social pedagogy in relation to other disciplines will be discussed. Some basic definitions from the political geography found in Lynch's Urban Studies 1960 may be useful for the conceptual framework of this analysis. These choices are an intentional attempt to show the liquidity and penetrability of interdisciplinary boundaries. Lynch's edges of the city were described as disruptive boundaries and walls which mark the borderlines between one area and another. However, this idiosyncratic geographical benchmark separating districts and road edges from each other were usually possible to cross and they formed a joining point between two separate distinctive worlds that met at the border. Lynch writes about it and also Tonkis, 2006. All the Lynch's boundaries have a clear physical representation like demarcation lines on the city map. They grow beyond their visible and palpable manifestation and form a symbolic representation in city dwellers' minds and influence their actions accordingly. I wrote about similar phenomena uh, in, uh, in my paper on gated communities in Saudi Arabia, 2015. So, a similar notion was found in my work on the concept of soft gating, which was internalized beyond its physical representation by both the insiders and the outsiders. Quirk and his colleagues in 2006 um, developed a concept of a permeable institution with hazy borders between in and out. This may also be a good illustration of the liquidity and permeability of the disciplinary boundaries. In this multidimensional spatial thinking, distinction is made, erecting both internal and external boundaries. However, being positioned at the contextual edge does not necessarily mean at the margin. Being at the edge brings increased potentiality to make an impact on the territories and borders of the neighboring disciplines. This, hopefully, is the case for placing social pedagogy at the edge of disciplines, inseparable from them, irreductible, and looking from a different perspective. This becomes clearer when confronted with analysis of the content of social pedagogy, the quarterly scientific journal published in Poland. When looking for a more physical expression of the disciplinary identity, the Polish Ministry of Science and Higher Education provided a very clear distinction. In 2011, they distinguished the following scientific and artistic disciplines. Humanities and social sciences, technical sciences, natural sciences, medical sciences, agriculture, forestry, veterinary sciences and art. Social pedagogy was aligned with social scientists within the larger field of pedagogy, which is also sometimes called educational studies. This places social pedagogy in the proximity of sociology, political science, psychology, 
which also come under the social sciences framing. All these disciplines have a strong relationship with humanities, as does social pedagogy. There are multiple advantages of being situated at the edge. The access to a larger number of theories, methods of research inquiry and tools of examination, a broader view from the edge to the horizon. Other advantages include the possibility to immerse within interdisciplinary discourse and the ability to employ a richer specialist vocabulary. Therefore, being placed in this uncomfortable space in between brings many advantages and widens the lens of inquiry. This is not to say that the metaphorical edge implies a lack of coherence or inconsistency. It is helpful to consider the example of how a social pedagogue perceives a child. When a social pedagogue examines a child, they do not see just a child. They see a person through a Kochekian lens and the Convention on the Rights of the Child. They may view a child as a service user from a social work and social care perspective, a member of family and a social environment, a product and an active participant of educational processes. The child may also be seen as a representative of social class, ethnic group, religious denomination and a nation, a global citizen with responsibilities for the environment, a subject of child protection and a consumer of prevention programs, also a user of culture, information technology, with all the dangers and flaws it brings. A social pedagogue may also see this child as part of local, national and global demographics, Human Development Index, Global Satisfaction Index, Gender Equality Index, um, a factor in uh, GDP contributions, and in a long-term perspective, a project for lifelong learning. Moreover, this child is a subject of social politics, health services, and a future contributor to the labor market. They may analyze the child's identity, well-being, welfare, mental health, psychological profile, developmental benchmarks, talents, and deficits. All these perspectives can be employed by social pedagogues to make a diagnosis or prognosis and are not tied to a certain age group. Social pedagogues are not limited to focus only on groups, more like sociologists, or only on individuals, more like psychologists. And this opens a whole range of opportunities and extrapolates the potential of the discipline. Social pedagogy in Poland goes far beyond social work as it covers a wide range of issues connected to the influences of social environments on individuals and groups of people, a little bit like Bronfen, Brenner and Morris 2006 with their ecological theory. Such influences may be intended or unintended. The influences are mutual to make impact, to change their social environments. And through awareness of social conditioning, it brings a notion of liberation. Social pedagogy in Poland, unlike the British variation focused more on social work, difficult families, foster parenting and the re-socialization of children and youths, takes a broader view of cultural, sociopolitical and historical circumstances, looking beyond childhood and early socialization process, treating social influences as a lifelong ongoing occurrences present in everyone's life through their life. The focus on philosophical grounding, the context of social work, socialization and education predominant amongst German social pedagogues had a strong influence on the direction in which the discipline developed in Poland. The early stages of the development of this discipline were focused on the socialization of children and on the education of parents, health visitors and educators. This was reflected in the book by Radlinska, 1961, in cooperation with Kaminski and Wroczyński, who are considered to be the founders of social pedagogy as an academic discipline in Poland, followed by Trempała, Kavula and Winiarski. It gradually expanded its scope and turned more towards the assessment and critical analysis of social structure, class, gender and religion in multicultural, globalized and digitalized social realms. The issues embraced by social pedagogy in Poland include the intercultural and global education, 
endemic socialization, culture, identity, memory, and place, space, civic participation and democracy, social policy, social politics, local government, children rights and the call for social justice for more equal opportunities at the start. These themes are ever present in the most popular cyclical publication for social pedagogues in Poland, social pedagogy. So now I would like to discuss the um, critical discourse analysis carried out using Max Guda 12 uh, qualitative um, data analysis software to look into 22 issues from the years 2012-2017 of the quarterly journal Social Pedagogy. Uh, have an example here. This is what the issues look like. And I looked into the contents of 22 of them. Social Pedagogy is a scientific journal which was first established by Professor Tadeusz Pilch, the first editor and in chief, and Zbigniew Kuzminski in 2001, when it focused on the roots and historical foundation of social pedagogy in Poland, presenting its greatest achievements and contributions in the first issues. It grew in popularity um, from 2008 as a forum of conceptual exchange and updates concerning current research in the field of social pedagogy in Poland. Since 2012, with the new editor-in-chief, uh, Professor Wiesław Tais, it broadened its focus uh, by including new authors from abroad and by translating all the titles and abstracts into English. Nowadays, it prints at least one full text in English per issue, making it more open and more inter internationally focused, more accessible for readers, of course, uh, from outside of Poland. In the last five years, it has become the most popular journal among social pedagogues in Poland and the most prestigious one to be published in awarding 11 ministerial points. So now I would like to present the findings of the um, qualitative analysis of the last 266 papers published in social pedagogy, um, which included both empirical and theoretical contributions. And the studies seem to be predominantly based on an interpretative paradigm. But there was also critical discourse analysis and quantitative um, research presented in some papers, as you see on the graph. When analyzing the predominant subject areas presented in the articles, um, child, family, culture and education, as well as social environment and school were the most frequently discussed subjects, followed by uh, the issues of youths, health and illness, religion, identity, influence, senior citizens, socialization and power structures. Amongst the papers, one could also find the categories of place and space, critical thought and reflexivity. The writers published in Social Pedagogy draw from many overseas thinkers with Berg, Baumann, Giddens, Fend, Boudier, Putnam, Foucault, du Dewey, Schultz, Freire, Merton, Coleman and Fromm being the most quoted. However, when looking at the overall quotations in numbers, the rich Polish literature from the field of social pedagogy dominates over the Western thought, as you may see on the next slide. As you may see, one of the most frequently quoted are Tadeusz Pilch, Barbara smolinska Tais, Wiesław Tais, Maria Mendel, Stanisław Kavula, Janusz Korczak, uh, and others. This is not to say that the papers from the last five years ignored contributions from the most renowned thinkers on education. On the contrary, the articles bring globally recognized writers to Poland, such as Neil, Wittgenstein, Heidegger, Vygotsky, Piaget, Rogers, Skinner, Weil, Blum, Brunner, Kronbach, Green, Freire, Leotard, Bernstein, Donaldson, Kohlberg, Erickson, Hearst, Noddings, Gardner, Giroux, Denzin, Darling Hammond, McLaren, many, many others. 
In the preface to the first issue of Social Pedagogy, written by Tadeusz Pil in 2001, one may find such claim. There are no irrelevant nor alien matters for this discipline as long as they refer to humans and their social conditioning. This draws an opulent landscape of social pedagogy discourses, which are found in this journal. Social pedagogy is also a well-established discipline in Poland, present at 20 universities at least, with at least eight full professors, at least 45 associate professors, 135 doctors and 15 adjuncts. Um, there is a Polish Social Pedagogy Association um, within Polish Academy of Sciences that has a large number of members uh, and organizes nationwide seminars, frequent conferences and congresses of social pedagogy. Their mission is to identify individual and social resources and to transform them into an active social force for the benefit of individuals and their communities. Closing my presentation, I must admit that this metaphorical outlook from the edge comes from a person who is relatively new to social pedagogy and entered this absorbent field of scientific inquiry through the MA in sociology and a doctorate in political science. So perhaps this background justifies viewing the discipline from the outside and positioning it at the edge. Um, it's a figurative edge, of course. If we think about the center and the periphery of social science, and we associate the periphery with the edge, perhaps social pedagogy is not at the edge, after all. By being an active neighbor of so many different disciplines, social pedagogy gains a special, more central place, where the crossroads of disciplines meet. Social pedagogy in Poland is positioned at the crossroads of pedagogy, sociology, social politics, social psychology, also drawing from nursing, law, philosophy, ethnography, anthropology, ethics and theology. The methodology of social pedagogy cuts across disciplinary boundaries, and so does the theoretical framework. And this is not an isolated case. Similar crossings have been experienced by other disciplines in the field. Although, unlike in Geren's place-sensitive spatial sociology, it does not allege power acquisition through its favorable position. It's more humble, despite the ever-present territoriality expressed by distinctive terminology, history and traditions of a separate scientific discipline. Social pedagogy in Poland assembles interdisciplinary bridges and blurs the edges. Social pedagogy in Poland is constantly mobile, dipping in and out from other fields, moving from subjects to subjects, being somewhat expansive and absorbent. This notion of greed to occupy new territories, crossing the boundaries and moving from the edge into neighboring fields should not be viewed as a conquest but rather as a drive for synergy and the potential for further development through learning from longer established others, teamwork, combined effort and knowledge. Thank you very much for your time.